Okay. All right. So this is the class, um, August 23rd. And the main subject of the class today is Plato's Euthyphro. It's a dialogue between Socrates and Euthyphro, who is a religious leader. And the subject of the dialogue is what is holiness or righteousness? What is, what is it about religious leaders that would make them necessary for a society to have them? What role do they play? And what kind of people should they be? And what should they be doing as religious leaders? So, um, okay, so Nicola, what did you say? I think I would like to, I like to take notes if I have a piece of paper. So, what do you decide? Sorry, what was it? What, what is your answer to the question? What is holiness? Right? Just open it. What do you think piety is or righteousness? Holiness? So, what I've read. Just a sec, I'm entering this. <laughs> there we go. Go ahead. Uh, so what I wrote is, uh, since in this reading, we had a couple of definition, definitions and I uh, could not really get an actual, actual answer, answer on what, what the uh, piety really is. It sure, you could call it right? you <laughs> uh, With my own words, I would define it as a believer who has actions behind, behind him that could, could prove to others that he is piety. Uh, I have always been in favor of letting the action speak, speak, speak for themselves. Of course, being why they take some sacrifices uh, could change a person and make people uh, look at the world differently. So calling somebody religious is not a compliment or an insult. It is a way of living. I'm looking at, at it as something like a hobby. hobby, hobby. People could, uh, could judge it, but they could also look it up, look up to. As of myself, I consider myself as a believer but not with a full commitment. So I could say that I'm, uh, I'm not really piety. Uh, as I said before, action speaks for themselves. I do go to church once in a month and pray to God only when I'm grateful for something or would ask him for help, uh, but that's just it. Uh, I don't believe it. It's enough to call myself piety. Okay, good. Um, all right. Okay, um, did you have any reactions to the dialogue itself? Yeah, um, so I believe that Plato uh, in this dialogue tried to teach us to say what, what is piety, uh, was how do we acquire knowledge? Most of the people think that person who has knowledge is the one who can answer the question correctly. So Plato wanted here to give an example of that. Only uh, when we can defend and clarify our actual beliefs, then we gain knowledge. Here uh, at, at Euporio, is that how you say it? You can, you can call Euporio, it the e guy. Yeah, e -guy, here e guy could not give a satisfying answer to Socrates' question on what is piety. So Socrates uh, urged us uh, even uh, to try to find the right answer before justification and for the decision he has made concerning his father. So in order to give someone knowledge, you would have to guide him toward the correct solution and make sure they can defend their decision instead of just repeat that. Okay, good. Um, in the case of religious piety, doing something because you think it's religious, is it particularly important to defend it because of what religious leaders can do in the name of religion? Like they declare wars, right? I mean, uh, well, I'm not sure. So in Greece, they had that god of the war. So I guess if that was God's, God's wish to do it, I would well, like country, that. Right? My you, country? You have Muslims and uh, you have. You have religious wars, don't you? Or 
religion is used as a weapon to separate people? Well, we're kind of now nowadays at least we're hoping for peace in the world because uh, we've been through a lot. We had uh, pretty much we were involved in every war in Europe. So uh, our country does not look good. So we're like rebuilding and hoping for a, a, a peace, in, a peace at least in our country. Uh, but yeah, um, we were never. We are a small country, so we don't make decisions if we want war or not. We're just okay. Uh, if Russia is going to war, we're gonna go with them, of course. Um, if somebody attacks, attack us, like Germany did a couple of times, we gotta defend. So it was really not not our decision to. And it wasn't religiously based. Uh, sometimes, yeah, a couple of wars it was. Um, for example, now Bosnia, which is a country next to us, is divided into half. Half of them are Muslims, and half of yeah. them are Christians. Uh, so, but. They are working out like they there's no problem over there right now. So I guess no, the situation is calm now. Yeah, but sometimes religion gets used, right? To yeah, yeah, war. Yeah, kind of. Well, we had a lot of wars against Turkey, which they are they are Muslim. So I guess I don't know if that nah. It wasn't because of the religion. Okay, it okay. was mainly because of the winning the territory and uh yeah okay so that's good to know yeah right? because all right so um so let's go through the different issues that come up so what was the situation here um let's see so last time we talked about greece right and the deities the different gods and the god of justice and let me go over these out because I'll tell you one story about it that Euthyphro refers to in his diary. Right? Um, so the, all the deities together are all represent living for the sake of something greater than yourself, right? So what are you living for? Um, so you could live for the sake of your children. Demeter is the goddess of fertility. Right? You can live for the sake of creating a high quality of society, right? Yeah. So, and that would be honor that you go above and beyond what you need to do in your work, for example. If you have an honor day, it means that you're promoting the quality of life at the institution. Um, it's not in your job description. You're not going to lose your job. You're just going for a high quality of life. And then justice is um, coming together under a common body of laws, right? So now we have to think of ourselves as citizens, not just as family members and not just friends, but actually relating to people we don't even know according to a body of laws, right? That makes sense. Yeah. And so you could live, you could um, decide that you want to start an institution. There's a lot of people that start a nonprofit or uh, some other, or I mean, our founding fathers started a whole legal system, a whole constitutional system. Mm -hmm. um, and then you could decide you want to be a ruler, right? You want to govern that system. You want to be a legislator, make laws, or you want to be a judge, apply laws, or you want to be an enforcer of the laws, like the police. Or the... Okay, so always it ought to be for the sake of promoting human flourishing. So you make laws that apply to everybody equally, right? Yeah. And so if somebody commits a crime, they ought to get equal punishment, right? They ought to have equal representation in front of the laws. They ought to have equal quality of a lawyer, <laughs> which they all in the US. Yeah. Whoever has the most money gets the best lawyer, right? Yeah. Um, that's why we don't really have a democracy. We have an oligarchy, just the rule of the rich. Um, but anyway, so in theory, and you should always punish with the view to rehabilitating and getting people back up. 
uh, back to flourishing, right? So there is a standard according to which some societies are better than others. They're more just than others because they provide everyone an opportunity to develop their natural capacities to the highest level they can. And, um, and, and while they are doing that, they need to be taught from when they're little that you should care about every person and that is yourself, right? You shouldn't take your opportunities and try to get as rich as possible or as powerful as possible or as popular as possible, right? Yeah. You should actually appreciate your opportunities and then provide opportunities for others, right? If everybody has a capacity to flourish. Okay, and some people have, uh, some people could be better at governing than others. And so they ought to get more opportunities at governing. Some people would be better at college teaching than others, right? Not everybody can get a PhD, not everybody wants to get a PhD, mm -hmm. but the ones who can and want to should have the opportunity, right? So if you're good at math, you should have the opportunity to get the degree you get, right? So there are people who don't have that opportunity. Right. They have the ability, but not the opportunity. And so that's unjust, like there's something wrong with the system. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's common sense, really. And anyway, and so uh, living for the sake of justice, justice areas of the God of war, because at that time, the thing that was honored was making the ultimate sacrifice for your country, right? Yeah. Nowadays in the US, I would say economics is the new kind of war, right? Yeah. Because there's competition, somebody wins. And so people get honored for getting rich, which I don't think it's <laughs> it's not helpful, right? right? But, but, um, but that's the same with Aries, is that he went too far. So he, he just was so obsessed with that kind of honor that he had a double-edged sword and he went in and brutalized everybody just to show how much he smoked he was. So when a business person goes into the business community and just does all sorts of cutthroat, brutal stuff, you know, yeah. just to get rich, just, just to win, win. that's too extreme, extreme, right? And so Aries has a half sister, Athena, who's the goddess of just war, right? And she's trying to keep him under wraps, right? Yeah. Only under certain circumstances do you actually go to war and you can't brutalize, you have to limit the conflict. Same with business, it should be, right? It's competitive, but it needs to be on the table, it needs to be, there need to be rules. <laughs> And yeah. there are a lot of rules, right? right? You can't have fraudulent, you can't, um, things like that. So then there's sensuality. Aphrodite is the goddess of beauty, but it shouldn't just be sexual lust, right? It's supposed to be inspiring people when somebody, somebody has been used. It means they're, they're, they're motivated, they're inspired to create something, right? Yeah. So it's not just about sex, it's about creativity. Um, it's about what drives people to paint pictures. You know, why do you paint a picture? Well, because there's something, you know, you want to say. You're in love with some idea. Mm -hmm. And it's driving you to create. Um, Dionysus is the god of the theater. And so, and the god of wine. So he also is, sensuality is good. But he thinks sensuality is good. not emotionally good. He's also the god who dies in the war. So in Greek tragedy in Homer, what happens is, do you have you ever had a revenge fantasy? Has anybody yeah. ever hurt you and you fantasize about getting back? Well, since I'm an older brother, yeah, my uh, four year younger sister, uh, my parents always thought oh, like. like when she do something wrong, they're just, come on, you're older, just, uh, you know, get over it. Did you and... pick on her? Huh? What was that? Did you pick on her? Uh, no, I always forgive. I, I, I learned how to forgive and, um, you know, just 
And since then, I just never was uh, someone who likes to get revenge. I always, uh, I always give people a second chance. Or if something's not going the way I think it should be going, I just, you know, kind of get away, get away from, from it. it. No, not no, just think like revenge or something like that. So, okay. But people do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do. And you probably know sibling rivalry can sometimes yeah. be a problem. Uh, okay. So there are tragedies about that. There's a whole house of Atreus that's plagued by sibling rivalry, right? Yeah. So these two brothers um, do something really wrong. <laughs> I'll yeah. just leave it at that. Yeah. And then their sons are still taking revenge because of what yeah. was not, right? right. Yeah. And they go at it. And then they pass that down. So, so the stories are designed to have people look at that, imagine that, identify with that, and then see what damage that does, right? Everybody gets hurt. Like, there's no point in this. So you flush it out. That's why Dionysus dies and is reborn. So you flush that out. So you just tell yourself, I really don't want that, <laughs> right? And then you're free to do something creative, okay? Then you can be creative and create a life and create a legacy that's worthwhile, right? Instead of being stuck in a sibling situation. All right, that's what those, that's what those stories are about. And so when you go watch a tragedy or Homer, Listen to someone reciting your, um, you flush that out of your system and you can be more creative, right? Erotic. Eros is about all these things are erotic. You can be really passionate about them. Apollo is the god of reason. So that's science and math. And, um, and, and there's a kind of music, very ordered music. So there's a beauty in mathematical proportion, right? You can actually uh, be in love sort of with math, right? Because it's beautiful when you find yeah. that it. Um, or science, or it's also about speech making, about argumentation, all the, all the left brain kind of stuff. Um, Artemis is the woods woman, so she doesn't care. Apollo creates cities. Right, that's where all you get all the skyscrapers and all that, you know, all the engineers and technicians. His twin sister likes the wilderness. Like, forget that. I'm out here. And also, that's important, right? Wilderness protection. I mean, right now, our Apollonian reasoning is destroying the earth, right? It's destroying the wilderness. So it was don't take it too far, right? Everything is sacred, but you can't. You have to balance it. Um, Demeter and Poseidon are these natural forces. Fertility of the earth and fertility of creatures, right? Um, and then taking care of those babies. And if you violate her, right? If you overstep our human bounds and start exploiting the earth, she's going to get mad, <laughs> right? She's not going to produce for you, right? And so we have that problem, right? We're in this midst of this horrible arrogance that's set up by Apollonian kind of reasoning, right? Science and math. So it's very odd that the U.S. has the most environmental scientists and the most climate deniers, right? <laughs> right. And we're the only country where politicians can get votes by denying climate change, right? So I don't think any other country the politicians call it a hoax. They might ignore it. They might say they care about it. If some rich corporation comes into a developing country and says, I'll give you a bunch of jobs. If you, if we can exploit resources and cut down your trees, you know, they don't say no, but they never, get up there and say climate change is a hoax, <laughs> right? So how come we have that? How come we have all the people that know that it's not a hoax and then all the people who say it's a hoax, <laughs> right? Have you ever wondered about that? Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, so that's Apollo. We're going too far with Apollo. We're destroying Demeter and the earth. 
Poseidon is the god of earthquakes and hurricanes. And of course, we're getting all that too. <laughs> and so the stories are don't don't tread on their turf, right? right. Don't go too far. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what's happening. So to me, the myths are just storytelling about how you really should relate to the world, right? And then, um, uh, let's see, Hestia is at the hearth where your home and the flame is at the hearth. And that's where you first start talking about life. You know, when your parents tell you, you know, don't pick on your sister. Yeah. But they start, that's where it first gets uh, ignited. I did hear that passage for reflection, talking about, about life, life and that kind of stuff. Then Hermes carries the torch into the world. So he carries the light from the gods to humans. And so that's where you leave home and you have these insights, right? That you carry with you um, into the world. And you have these character traits and these ways of engaging in dialogue about how to live. It starts at home and then you carry it into the world. Um, and then uh, Hades and Persephone. Hades is the god of the underworld. And it's always reminding you, what is the story you want to leave behind? What is your legacy that you want to leave behind? And then uh, Persephone is the one who was raped and abducted. She was victimized. And if all you care about is money or power, you're going to create victims, right? You're going to hurt people. Well, she victimizes you <laughs> for no. eternity, right? So that's the one that's the threat. You do this, you're going to roast the hell. Except, Except if you, you do this, Persephone is going to do to you <laughs> for eternity what you're doing to be people, right? right? So that's kind of the story of uh, you know in short form but does that make sense that all of these things are important we need we need justice we need reason we need wilderness we need fertility we need all that stuff and the stories are about you have to balance it and if you become obsessed about it you're going to do a lot of damage does that make sense sure. okay so in their creation story you start out with uh, Earth. Earth is the beginning. Um, there's four forces. Chaos. Eros is creativity, creative drive. Thanatos is destructive. And then Earth, Gaia. So this drama between the creative and the destructive plays out on the Earth. Okay? She gives birth to sky. So now you have Earth and sky. And um, then they start giving birth together to um, mountains, rivers. So now the earth, it started out as just this clod of dirt. Well, now it starts having a history before the mountains, after the mountains, right? And volcanoes, it starts, starts to have a history to it. It starts to change. And so they give birth to Kronos, time, right? It's a metaphor, right? So at a certain point, the Earth started having a history in time, so it gives birth to time. But they also gave birth to some um, monsters with a lot of heads, and um, and Uranus was embarrassed by these monsters, okay? And he was threatened by them because they might destroy him, right? And they were out. So then I say, all right, what if you have this very ego-driven dad who wants the son to be a chip off the old block, right? To just take over the business or okay, so the parent has an agenda for the kid, right? Should parents have an agenda for the kid, or should kids find out for themselves what they want to do? Um I think the parents are obviously more experienced, so they should show them the path. And it is, but they, they shouldn't push it too far. It just, they can show them and the kids that can choose either if they want to go that, with that path or just uh, do something else. I don't know how to find it that way. 
okay, or do parents teach you like self-control, courage in the face of fear, or, I mean, there's certain moral virtues, right, that the parents can teach you? Um, I'm really not sure what agenda is. So. Oh, that means telling you what sort of job you should have. Oh, okay. Um, well, uh, for example, my father, he just gave me an idea, what should I do as a living? He gave me an option as a uh, school or as a programming. And I thought those two ideas were kind of great ideas. So I took, uh, took a chance with both and I'm um, still holding to it. So um, he never pushed me to do something, right. but he gave me a, an idea. Right. So yeah, uh, that's the difference, right? Yeah. But I'm not sure how he would react if I chose some other uh, path. Maybe he would support me in that. He wouldn't agree with it, but he would support me because I kind of think that that's parents' duty to, to support, support their kids, kids on whatever they do. Um, as long as it's reasonable. Yeah, right? I guess, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but, so what happened to Uranus? Let me give you what. He, what happens if a kid is not as smart as the dad? Okay, so dad has his ego cut up. Not as smart, not as good looking, not as athletic, I don't know. Um, and she's kind of embarrassed. Is that psychologically healthy for the kid? Um, kid could help it. Can help. Yeah. It looks like he can help his natural intelligence. He can help. Well, I also do think that would be a parent's duty to make him feel good. Um, right. And what if they feel right? right? If you're embarrassed by your kid, that's that's wrong, right? Psychologically yeah. crippling. To the yeah, kid. Your kid should be like the most important, important thing in the world, and you shouldn't like. Because I uh, shouldn't really care what uh, other people think, so you would feel embarrassed, I guess. Um, but what to do? Um, well, it's just the idea is don't do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Then on the other stream, he was afraid of them because they might overpower him, right? Yeah. So what if your kid is actually smarter than you, more talented than you? Um, cuter than you, yeah. uh, right? So then you um, compete against them, right? Is that healthy? No, I don't think so. That should be, it should make you proud, really. I mean, Okay, so the idea, it. that's right. The idea is let your kid be your kid, yeah, right? right? But Uranus makes both mistakes, right? right? And he buries them in the earth. So if an ego-driven dad harms the kid then the kid the mother wants to protect right, right. from that harm and she's mad okay right. okay, okay so, so she's, she's mad. mad and so she goes in front of all of her kids with the sickle and she says okay i want you to cut off his genitals one of you has to cut off his genitals <laughs> what, what does that, that mean it means cutting off his passion for life right because it's all about eros. So you cut off their um, ability to live passion, okay? And so Kronos <clears throat> raises his hand and says, I'll do it, mom, <laughs> okay? So he cuts off his dad's genitals and he becomes king of the gods, right? He replaces his dad violently, okay? So then, what happens when he has a bunch of kids and they start coming of age? What do you think? He's paranoid, right? Right. Okay, so what does he do? He the children. children. <laughs> well, well have you ever, I mean, psychologically, you could say this father is devouring his kids, right? The people use that word, right? Yeah. It means that they're not letting the kid be anything. So, so to devour your kid is psychological. You're really critical about them because you're so paranoid that they might be more, they might do better than you, or, or that actually they might do to you what you did to your dad, yeah. which is cut him off and tell him he's no good. Um, so then, um, so what happens is 
Zeus gets hidden, gets his mother wraps up a stone and he gives that to him and she sends Zeus over to Crete to get raised. Uh, so he escapes that. And then later on, um, somebody gives him a, a herb and he throws up and he vomits up these other kids. Okay. <laughs> okay. The main point there is that that's what Euthyphro refers to in this story, right? So Euthyphro has taken his father to court for murder. And the family is totally upset. You're not so you're supposed to honor your father and your mother, right? And you're a religious leader. Like, what is this? Okay. Yeah. So, and he thinks he has to go over and above. He's a religious leader, so he has to show that he has even a more greater insight about what the gods want, right? So he has to go over and above and show the public that he cares so much about what the gods want that he's going to violate the standard notions of, of pie, right? All right? Okay, so, and then that's where he says, I'm not doing what Kronos did to her stomach, right? I'm not cutting off his chin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that's, that's that reference. So he's using the quotes. This is the thing he's using quotes from the Holy Ghost to justify what he's doing. And what he's doing goes against common sense or traditional norms about what it means to be righteous. Right. It means honoring the gods, right? Okay, so um, let's see. So here are the different definitions of pi. Okay, so he is prosecuting his dad for murder. And um, he's tell he tells Socrates that. And Socrates says, wow, you know, you must know, <laughs> right? You must know a lot more than I know about what the gods want. And then he says, well, I'm not doing what Kronos did his dad. Okay, and so Socrates says, well, and I just want to give you a sense of, this would be a natural conversation, right? It'd be the kind of conversation I think you'd wish you could have with some of these religious leaders you read about in the paper. At least I do. Like you read about what these people do in the name of religion, and you just feel like, I wish I could get that person to sit down and just tell me, you know, what are they really thinking here? Like, what are they? Yeah. yeah, okay, that's this is what the play is that you get that chance to actually pick somebody's brain, right? And so in my class, I pick the brains of my student, <laughs> right? Okay, because I think when, when you're in college, you need to get your brain picked or at least activated. You didn't even know you were thinking about that, or you never consciously brought that out. But just in the back of your mind, and other people around saying all this stuff. Um, so then he says, Well, what is piety? Right? Like, what is the quality that you have that makes you really stupid? That makes you think you know this is what the God wants. Like, what is it? And so his first thing is piety is uh for prosecuting anyone who's guilty of murder or sacrilege or a crime, no matter who it is, right? Now, in the context of Greek culture, a, a slave, slave had no rights, right? So Euthyphro would have to be some sort of a social justice activist, right? He'd have to be going against all the norms. And he, there's no indication that he really was wanting to engage in this huge social change ever, right? He just decides in this case. And that's why it's outrageous because the slave, first of all, doesn't have to be. Second of all, the slave got drunk and killed another slave, right? right. And so, and third of all, his dad didn't kill that slave. He actually sent a messenger to Delphi to try and find out, well, what do the gods want? Because that was like the International Center for Justice. It was like the United Nations, where individual <coughs> countries subject themselves to a higher standard, international law, 
So Delphi was the international center. So, um, and then before the messenger got back, the slave died in the ditch, right? So it's very, if it's not cut and dry case at all. The average of being, no, you know, he killed someone as a slave, his dad tried. And it was just an accident that the guy died first, right? So, um, all right. And then, and then piety is doing what I'm doing. And then that's when he refers to that story of Kronos. And um, they think we're not supposed to, okay. Um, and so, in general, people think piety is respecting your elders, especially your parents. Um, and Socrates doesn't even think the stories are literally true, right? So, just like I told you, I don't think those stories are literally true, right? Yeah, yeah. But they're psych but they're psychological insight, insight, and they're and they're trying to educate your psyche. About how to live and flushing out stuff. You might be tempted to want to control your kid. You might be tempted to be embarrassed. Don't do that, right? Um, so, so Socrates, Socrates read the books as metaphors, as art. They're, they're legitimate, legitimate in what they're doing, doing but they're not literally true, right? But that put him on. He's he's also a religious innovator. So both these guys are innovating. They have different idea of what it means to be religious than the traditional standard. Just believe in it and the gods have power. They can do stuff we can't do. That was kind of the thing. Okay. Well, all right. Um, the, the definition number two, he says, well, well there's, there's this particular case, case, but I'm asking you about in general, right? What's in general the quality of holiness? The second one is doing what's dear to the gods, right? Well, then Socrates says, yeah, but the gods disagree, right? Okay, so if you take the Old Testament, all those stories, New Testament, they disagree. disagree. They're not, They're not the same. same. They, they don't, don't have the same, same idea of God. They don't have the same advice. In the Old Testament, there's places where God takes revenge. For seven generations, Jesus says you should forgive seven times seven times, right? I mean, you can take woes from the Bible. Wait a sec, right? That's why when um, Mr. Beauty teaches Old Testament, New Testament, like the Old Testament, I took an Old Testament class. There's four different writers, the Yahweh, the Jehovah, the Deuteronomy, and the Leviticus. You know, there's different writers and they have different ideas of God and they have different advice and their image of God is different. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's just that if you take every word literally, like it's inerrant, you're, it's, they disagree. Um, so that's what Socrates is pointing out is true in his religion too. Um, then, well, they all agree that whoever kills someone unjustly should be punished. And then what's the next logical thing? Well, people disagree and <laughs> kill someone unjustly, yeah. right? Like how would an abused woman who eventually just kills her abuser, her husband, right? And that's all controversial. And it's controversial whether things are self-defense or not. You know, people are always arguing about that. So so he says to you, right? We know the gods argue about a lot of stuff. And we know people argue about this particular question. Is that really murder, right? So you have to prove to me that the gods all agree that what you're doing is right. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. that's a tough argument to make. But murdering someone, I don't think that's... A way to do uh, to solve things out. So I don't think that's a uh, how to say uh, forgettable. Like um, it is, you took someone's life, and that life means to, to some other people. It's just uh, it's a big deal. If, I, if it comes to me, that's a big deal. Uh, right. 
Okay. I don't think there's a really excuse that you should be like forgiven for oh, murdering someone. Right. And so the question is, is it sometimes self-defense? Right? People argue about that. Yeah, but um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know who to judge about that, but I don't know. In a in a court of law, right? Yeah. They have first degree murder. That's where it's planned ahead. It's calculated. Then second degree is um, it's not right. Then there's manslaughter, <laughs> and that one is an act of passion. I think you hadn't thought about it at all, right? So there there are these different grades. Of murder, and, and so, so that's, that's the main point, point is that people disagree. So, what would be the punishment of the self defense murder? Well, it depends upon what will happen is that the defendant will argue self defense, and then the prosecutor will say that's bullshit, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then a jury decides, but then the punishment, the judge will give a lighter sentence or a heavier sentence depending, depending on like, you understand, you understand? It's, very it's very subtle, subtle right? Yeah, yeah. And it should be subtle because situations are very a lot. Um, so, so the point here is the main thing is Socrates says, we know the gods disagree on a lot of stuff. So we know the Bible disagrees on a lot of stuff. We know that human beings disagree about murder and they disagree about this particular case. So you throw, you need to show me that in this particular case, all the gods would agree, right? Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. And he hasn't shown that. He never showed that. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. He thinks he can, but he never does. Okay. So then he wants, yeah, show me that all the gods are free. And then he says, okay, let's forget that. <laughs> That's not going to go anywhere. Now, here's the main question of the dialogue. Do the gods love something because it's holy? Or is something holy because the gods love it? Mm -hmm. And uh, you're talking about the Greece? You, well, you could talk about your own idea of God, whatever it is, or is it good? I mean, I think that God's, God loves every human being, uh, either if it's holy or, holy or not holy. So I would think the second option is right, uh, everything that, that is holy. Uh, how do you say it? Something is holy because the gods love it, right? Well, what about a behavior, right? So somebody engages in, in a behavior. Um, uh, well, I mean, we have a lot of arguments in our country about guns, abortion, war, um, capital punishment, right? Right. And some people say God wants this. And yeah. Some people say reason wants that, right? So is something here's the here's the what's the difference right is something holy because the gods love it if it's holy because the gods love it you have to read the bible right, right. and you have to memorize it and you have to figure out everything you do has to have a bible book, right? right if the gods love something because it's holy then what do you have to do can you do that if the gods love something because it's holy, what do you have to do? What I don't got say, I guess. Well, you have to ask, what is holy? Yeah. Right? Yeah. First, you have to ask, well, what is holiness? And then I'll figure out what the gods want, right? Yeah. Okay, that's what Socrates does, is he asks, what is holy? And then I'll figure out what the gods want. Whereas Euthyphro is what what uh let's see god's want it because it's holy because the gods want right so euthyphro is trying to memorize that text and use a text to justify what he does 
Does that make sense? Right. So those are two very different ways of living, right? One of them is figure out what is holy. And the other one is memorize the holy books and always have a quote every time you use. Does that, do you understand that? Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, okay. Now, um, all right. And in this class, what we're doing is we're finding these um, virtuous char character traits, virtue, and every religion thinks those are important, right? So that's what holiness is, or that's what virtue is. And therefore, every religion should actually promote those virtues, right? Yeah. And they do. <laughs> that's the amazing thing. So, so you, you can, can see it in Socrates, Socrates, the Sermon on the Mount, in Confucius Analects, in the Bhagavad Gita, in Buddha, his way of life, and the wisdom of the Buddha, and in Islam. Okay, so that's what we're doing in this class. Is you're figuring out what's holiness based on the human condition, not on any one set of texts. Does that make sense? Because that's philosophy. Um, okay, so then he lets that go. And the next thing is piety is part of justice that attends the gods. Okay. So is it true that well, what if you knew your brother um, stole something or committed murder or whatever? Um, well, what about this? Now, abortion is illegal in our country. It is going to happen, you know, that parents are going to figure out that their daughter probably got an abortion, right? She had a boyfriend, and suddenly she left town, right? Are they going to take her to the river for murder? <laughs> right? Okay. Well, uh, I know a lot of people are against that uh, uh, abortion thing that it's illegal and not because it's still new. Yes. Uh, but me as a, if like my sister or my daughter would be uh, decide to Abort. Uh, I think that was support or I mean, yeah, it's illegal, but uh, that That's some of them care for them uh, is like for well, everybody against them. I will be the only support. I don't know. I just like but the, the thing is the tension between your loyalty to your family yeah. and the laws, right? Yeah, I think that was loyalty. Right. But what the point here is that overall thing. Right? right, that maybe your relation, your family is sacred enough that maybe if somebody else wants to take her, but I'm not taking her. Right, that's um, and so so justice can apply to human beings, whereas holiness applies to family. Right, does that make sense? Um, it's a subclass, and so it um. Okay, okay, so that's the idea, is that uh, holiness is um, justice attends to the gods, how we relate to what's sacred and the family is sacred. And then justice applies to how we relate to other citizens, okay? And so then the other part is um, what kind of service to the gods, what kind of relationship is it people should have? to the God or to God, right? Um, is it a master-slave relationship? <laughs> like you're the servant of God? Um, or is it, uh, what kind of relationship? Yeah, yeah. You understand that question? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, well, in my case, um, I mean, I, I, I'm thinking for myself, I'm a old man and I should make my own decisions and uh, like, I'm not slave of the God, I don't believe I, I just respect God. Uh, I thank him for the good, the good things that's happening to me. But if something says the Bible should be done that way, and I believe it should be done that way, but the other way, I think I will go my way, I guess. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's good. I mean, that's good because you're finding out your own mind, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think there should out. be a limit. 
yes. Right. I mean, but you're finding out is that you want to ask what it's all about. And then you'll find out. Yeah. But you don't want to just think, ah, oh, so there's a Bible quote that I have. Right. 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 Like the nuns in the, uh, I don't know, is it where they live? The Convent. Convent. Like they're not supposed to have sex, right? Yeah. And I, I don't know if that's it's God, God. how it's supposed to be. I mean, then the, there will be no uh, people in the world. So that's just one example. Like, I, I, I think I'll do my own thing. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's what, that's the same point here, right? right? Is that, and you would think for yourself when it came to turning your sister in for murder, right? right, right. Okay. okay. Um, that's why it was so outrageous that, that Euthyphro did that to his dad, right? It's like, let somebody else decide if we're mm. a son to do that. It's pretty crazy. Anyway, so the next thing is, well, what is that relationship? And here's the, the next point. Does the art of medicine attend to the doctor, serve the doctor to produce health? Or does the doctor serve the art of medicine to produce health? I need a minute to figure out what. <laughs> or does the shipbuilder serve the art of shipbuilding to produce a ship? Or does the art of shipbuilding serve the shipbuilder to produce the ship? Um, I think the both will be the second thing. It's like the medicine would. But do all of that for the doctor and the ship who, who do all of that for okay. the person. Who what happens it. if you're a doctor and you think you've got this degree, right? right? That it serves you, right? Yeah. Well, then what else can you do? You can use it to make money, right? Right. Well, the knowledge of uh, medicine makes me a doctor. Uh, I'm going to make my own. own. But you serve the art, right? If you're serving the art of medicine, then you're a servant of what you know in order to produce health. So your goal is health. Right. But if you use your degree to serve you, then your goal can be money, power, fame. You know, you can abuse that knowledge. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So if if the art of medicine serves the doctor, he can abuse, he can decide what he wants to do with it, right? Make money. I mean, he produces health, but he charges, right? Okay. Whereas if he is serving the art, he doesn't abuse it, right? It's always for the patient. And so if that patient can't pay, it's okay. I have the knowledge. I, I don't want to use it. Don't use it at all. It's not about the money. It's not, it's about getting people healthy. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, today, doc, in order to be a doctor, you gotta do school for I don't know I how know, many they, years. So I'm, I'm sure, sure they do it like because of the money. It's true. I <laughs> mean, actually, power, right? our system in the US is set up to foment greed, right? Yeah. But still, you have to say, yeah, except that you can be on an emergency call and make six thousand bucks in a weekend too. Right. So and people get to call it up. <laughs> yeah, but the, the main point is that we have a system that's really a lot more into money making than it is in helping people get well. And sometimes a doctor is not the issue; it's the insurance company and all this other stuff. But we have a healthcare system that we're free is allowed to corrupt the system. And so in the US, we pay three times more than in Europe. Right. We have the same overall number of visits to doctors, mm -hmm. the same lifespan. But that's because of the greed. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, if you don't have insurance, you're, you're probably gonna go broke. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's lots of- I always find it like, why is that way? I think that's the only United States ever yeah. I know. Actually, I have a little chart. Yeah. <laughs> and most of Europe and all that, like you pay between two and three thousand bucks and you live about eight years, right? 
in the yes. U.S. It's and just like, a yeah. And students, I think they all have, we all have free free insurance. Like uh, we don't have to pay anything. Or I don't know why the USA does that. And Money. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> and then also you have to go to school and get three hundred fifty thousand bucks in debt. So then the doctors would be motivated by money, whereas in Europe, you're not in that much and and debt. This, and schools are so expensive too. Like, if people want to get knowledge, why why should they? In some, for example, Slovenia, college is free for students. So like, in our school, is, uh, you know, uh, our colleges are maybe $1,000 a year. So it's just, and there's also a chance, like we do the exams, exams and the, uh, there's a line, and whoever is above that line, they get it for free. And the others who don't, who did their test uh, uh, worse than the above the line, they have to pay. Right. I think that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Who, who tries harder should be uh, rewarded. And here, I mean, yeah, there's also not scholarships here, but. No, it's like there's schools where it's 70,000 bucks. Yeah. And if you get Get a scholarship for like five thousand. What it really? My is. brother paid. He had two kids. One just went to undergrad. One also went to law school. Total of six hundred fifty thousand dollars for his kids from kindergarten. No. But they got good paying jobs. You know that's yeah. how it works in the U.S. I don't know. It kept money. My kids went to the public schools. You yeah, know? Right, right. And now they right. have. Um, <laughs> if, there's not, uh, if there wasn't a. Uh, Scholarship for basketball, I wouldn't even be in the United States. I'm yeah, and I mean, nobody <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the idea is that we have a system where everybody is using their talents, getting their degrees, and it's about money, right? right. Where where is it's about power? power. That's a corruption, the whole system. But that's what this question is getting at. Does that make sense? Right. Okay, so that's why I like Plato's dialogues, is they bring up all these major questions. Just in a little bit, right? right? But every you know, that little bit, those few lines, oh, the whole society is upside down yeah. or right side up, depending on that very question. Are you serving the art of medicine or is it in serving you? Right? Okay. okay. All right. So what about the doctor? I mean, what about pipe? Like when you go to church and stuff, like what's that about, right? Yeah. What is it that... Piety serves the art of what to produce what? Like, what the heck is this? So, with it's ship building, there's, there's a ship. ship. You know, it's obvious. obvious. Yeah. With health, it's inside of you, but it's real. Yeah. What about piety? Like, what the heck is that? Right? It's a certain attitude, right? Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe you go to church and you pray and all that, but to produce some sort of attitude. Right inside of you, some sort of emotional orientation, intellectual orientation towards the world. Um, but I'm sorry, <laughs> my bridge fell out yesterday and I got yeah, to go get, get some, some of that glue. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so this is have you ever had that, you know, somebody you know suffers unjustly and then you think, well, that's not fair, right? Yeah, well. Uh, there, there's that saying, at least in our country, I don't know, that the best, the goodest people live first, I guess. Like, yeah, okay, the best people die, die you know. Die first, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in a war and stuff because, because they, they go out there and get on the front line, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah <laughs> I never understand, like, they all say because, like, uh, he needs to get to the God because he's such and such, such a person. person, and I just never understood that. <laughs> and I know some. People that were really nice and good, and they just left too early, and it just, it just, just makes, makes a lot of people, people suffer around them. Suffer around them, around them makes, makes a lot of life away, away, life away. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I mean, I mean, for me, that my son, son and daughter, everybody loves them, and they're really nice. They're teachers. Yeah. They're totally dedicated to teaching poor kids in the city. Yeah. Oh, my son got cancer. Oh. Okay. Right, everybody's going, not them, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. them, not yeah, them. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, but that's not what it's about. It's like, that's doing a deal. Okay, God, I'll be a good little boy, but make sure I don't get sick. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's right. making a deal with God. And that's, that's what, what happens here. I'll scratch yeah. your back, you scratch my back, right? 
And you were saying in the beginning, sometimes you pray to ask for stuff, right? And be grateful. Yeah. Right. Well, that's it, right? Yeah. Is it really a business deal? Should it be a business deal? No. Oh, yeah. no. Because again, you're making it serve you rather than you serve it, right? right. And so, so at the end, Socrates, okay. So I, Euthyphro thought he was really bringing the country back to God by being serious. And Socrates thought, no, no, you're undermining even the stability that we have, right? right? Does that make sense? And so it's controversial. But when you end up with this idea <laughs> that, um, I want to, I don't want to do that. I want to, that, um, that piety, you go to church in order to kind of do a business deal with God, <laughs> then that's, you should look at that and say, no, that's, that's like a little kid. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, that's kind of childish way of thinking. Uh, there still are plenty of people who think that way, though. This article is about, uh, oh, gosh, no, actually, we have till 9.15, that's right. This one is about a mother whose child dies of SIDS. And um, actually, I went to high school with this girl, a uh, hope that the article was about. And when I heard that her little daughter died, I actually was at the service. Now. Everybody was saying, well, not them, you know, they're not really very young. And then you realize, actually, in my mind, I'm still making this deal. <laughs> Well, then it happens that my son gets cancer, so that even gets closer to home. But it shouldn't be about making deals with God. It should be about, well, what is your understanding of humanity's place in the universe and your own place, right? There are powers greater than you. And that should just be part of your worldview. It should be part of you. And so when people, suffer unjustly you should you have to separate well which what kind of suffering is it, is it something just because the human condition is vulnerable right so with SIDS it's just nobody did anything you're not getting punished for anything you know it just happens and you happen to be the one um with my son it was neuroendocrine cancer and everybody knows. I mean, scientists have established that plastic leaches endocrine disruptors into our food, into our water. And so my son gets neuroendocrine cancer. Well, of course, but, but nobody's gonna, gonna say that. that. Nobody will say we gotta stop using plastic because as this woman scientist, I'm sure she's not the only one. She told the Environmental Protection Agency, but they will not do anything because the corporations will just totally come after them. It's all about money. So we're going to have people having neuroendocrine cancer. <laughs> There's lots of cancers because we just have all this poison in our society, yeah. right? And so anyway, so... That we do, I do have a chart eventually about all this different kind of suffering, unjust suffering. Because religion, for a lot of people, it's about trying to resolve unjust suffering. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so then I have some examples here, right? Um, and in our country, and it's just, I, that's why I like, I'm going to learn about Serbia and find out, does this happen in your country? Um, Let's see, why, why do people go to church? Do they go because they really want to be pious or they go to network with other people, right? Uh, you want to be seen at church because it'll make people think you're a good guy yeah. and they'll want to do business with you or something. What about capital punishment? Some, Some people think that's God, you know, it's God's law. Well. Other people say, no, no, there's no way God would want that, right? It's in the Bible that you're not supposed to take revenge. Well, in the Old Testament, God takes revenge. In the New Testament, not, you know, like, where are you going to quote from? Um, and then there's abortion. Should parents turn their kids in? Like, we've been through that. Should, uh, should a girl get capital punishment? 
should she be killed because she killed an innocent person? Do you want about 2.2 million, million women being killed every year? Because they had abortions? I would rather not talk into that. I mean, I'm a, I'm a guy. Um, I mean, just... First of all, it costs a, cost a lot of tax money because you have to have a lot of courts and a lot of judges. And all. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not really familiar with how laws work here, so I'm nobody to judge. So is abortion legal in Serbia? Uh, I think it's still is. I don't know. I'm, I think it is, but not, not completely sure. That's funny that it's not a big deal, right? So, I mean, the fact that you don't know, my God, in the U.S., people can't yeah. stop talking about it. Yeah. The, the thing, thing about it is it's, it's really stupid because there's the same number of abortions, if it's legal or not. Yeah. Okay? They're either safe or they're dangerous. Right. <laughs> I mean, or they're not expensive or they're expensive. So I was in high school. When I was in high school, it was still illegal. If you had some friends and if you had some money, you just went to Canada. It was not a problem. But the people who really got in trouble were poor women and teenagers. Right. And then they go underground and they get butchered. Okay. So just in terms of the number of abortions doesn't change. It'll go up if there's more poverty. And it goes up if, if there's if, if teenagers don't, don't get, get sex ed and they don't get contraceptions. Then you get more abortions. And so the people are against abortion also are against teenage sex ed. They're against contraception. There's just gonna be more abortions. <laughs> it's absurd, right? Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. But that's why you know you do dialogues like this because then the students work this stuff out. They figure out, you know, what were they told? What do they think? Um, there's a difference between abortion as killing and abortion as public policy. When you try to make it illegal, there's all this political stuff that goes on, right? It's not about abortion. It's not about all oh, those poor innocent babies anymore. It's about calculating how to get votes so that politicians who, their, their daughters would get abortions in a heartbeat, you know? Right? right, the politicians, they're not in it. They're not even thinking about what, what actually it is. All they know is on the check sheet and focus groups, they can get votes for being against the abortion. All right, so it gets politicized. Um, the child dies of sin, do people say it's God's will? And it's testing your faith. Um, Christian scientists deny children medical care. In our country, we use God to justify military interventions, right? In Iraq and all that stuff. Um, so um, what I wanted to get at here was, oh, September 11th, if you want to look at that. Um, all the, the ways religious, the way religious leaders interpreted it, right? One of them is God is angry with us. We're getting what we deserve. How does God allow it? Um, well, we don't know. We just have to accept that God did allow it. Um, and God is all powerful, right? Um, Osama bin Laden said it's punishment because Americans are so greedy and selfish, self-indulgent. Um, okay, and then... Reverend Nixon, God doesn't kill thousands of people to teach us a lesson, right? Um, let's see, hurting Arab Americans is not Christian, you know, so we started Americans went after other Arab Americans. And then, so these are all disagree, you know, how do religious leaders interpret this event? Um, Let's see, and those are the Bible texts for that day, which were kind of interesting because they were relevant. But what about this one, the religious right? So again, I'm curious if in Serbia, any of this kind of stuff goes on, or if you know, if, if in Serbia, you look at the US, you know, 
for your creep or you know what? Or what? It's just indifference. But okay, so Jerry Falwell says it's the pagans, the abortionists, the feminists, the gays, the lesbians. Um, you help this is happen. It says because our country is getting taken over by these liberals, God allowed that to happen. <laughs> okay. Um, you say you're supposed to be nice to Episcopalians and Presbyterians and Methodists. No. Okay. From an American point of view, this is incredible because in the Declaration of Independence, 85 of the people who signed it were Episcopalians. Okay. And there I were, don't know what that is. Oh, well, they unite reason and faith. That's the so they're intellectuals. So they never separate science from religion. Okay. And those were our founding fathers were intellectuals. And now we have these religious leaders who are saying that they're the Antichrist. And they're saying it in the name of patriotism. <laughs> okay. So the analogy would be if you have certain Serbian nationalists who interpret what it means to, be, to love Serbia in a way that's like the opposite of what, what Serbia stands for or whatever, right? So I don't know if Serbia was established as a secular state rather than as any kind of religiously based a theocracy. Was it always a secular state? Um, I'm not sure what secular means. Oh, it means there's no established religion. It means that the Constitution, the laws, don't oh, mention God at all. Oh, oh, um, well, I know the, the Serbia churches are very important. Uh, the people are really for it and will, will, will defend uh, our religion, that's for sure. But when it comes to laws, uh, I don't think religion, religion is much involved. Uh, so I would say the religion is important, but it's not involved with politics. So when you're acting as a citizen, yeah, you don't bring your religion and you don't yeah, discriminate. Not all of us are religious. Right, and so you don't discriminate against yeah. people based on it. Okay, and that's, okay, if that's a well-established habit. Now that's what our founding fathers wanted. Americans, I think, like, but after 9-11, especially, there's this, it's a Christian nation, right? You're trying to, to attach moral qualities yeah. to Christianity. Somehow, if you're not Christian, you're not moral, right? right. right. Our founders did not want that to happen, but that is happening in our country, so I'm not sure. Um, Anyway, as long as you can think about, is that happening in Serbia or Bosnia? You know, I mean, the news that we get, Bosnia and Serbia and all that, is there must be a whole lot of people associating, integrating politics and religion, right? Um, but lots of times the news does not give what really goes on, right? So that's why I like to have students who are from those countries, because they know better. Yeah, yeah. I could ever know. Um, but anyway, so this is what happened in the US. Um, and so, so in the US, there's a big, you know, we're just really in the middle of if, you know, God is not a Republican or a Democrat, right? And so these people are saying, you can't co opt God, you can't say God. Um, takes one political side or another. So poverty is important. So the Republicans don't care about poverty. They don't. Poverty programs are socially, right? And they're the God party, okay? Just pray to Jesus and get your act together and get a job. And the other side says, wait a second, the system is set up for people to fail. Yeah. So we've got to give people social programs and give them a chance. Um, caring for the environment, environment right? right? God, God wants, wants us to care for that. No, the other side, no. Capitalism is more important. They'll, They'll take, take care, care of us. 
the other side war, right? Going into Iraq, blah, blah. This side, um, um, truth telling to the candidates, are they being, uh, you know, telling the truth? At least that's a huge problem in our country with, the, with truth telling and um, using religion then, if, you know, as this political tool that's obviously happening in our country. What about human rights? What, what about, about international relate to other people? Um, how about terrorism? terrorism. So, so war, terrorism in our country, country, all this stuff is controversial, and there are people using religion to justify their stance. Does that make sense? Right. Um, so, so, and I have some other articles here, but you can think about it. Uh, bigotry in Islam and bigotry here. Um, and what these articles are about is what happened in the U.S. after 9-11. So, like, you know, it's just if you want to find out that there was a chance for us to come together and to think about how our greed has caused people to despise us. Mm -hmm. And we ought to be negotiating with the Mideast we ought to be aware that we're exploiting them, that we're hated by them. We ought to find a way to go to, you know, not just act yeah. arrogantly and materialistic. I'm richer than you and all that stuff. Right. So, and also public service. We could have a, a asking people to, to spend a year in public service. We could have had a lot of that stuff, and we did it. Like we use this to alienate ourselves from everybody and to say, to invade Iraq, which had nothing to do with it because we had a group of people who wanted to invade Iraq. After 9-11, truly the emails, let's get this associated with Saddam in the public mind so that we can invade Iraq for Chichi It was completely made up. All right. And did you know that? Like, did you know that? I heard something about it. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, that's that. And so that relates to it's what is goldness, right? It relates to this question. So that, that see, that's the lesson for today, right? Sure. That it's controversial and that it was in Athens and it has been ever since. And it makes a lot of difference, right? And sure. how people act in human history. Okay, so the next one is, is Socrates defending his way of life. So that's for next time, for Thursday. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, and so you can write up your final post. And why don't you post it on Google and Schoology if it's okay. not that hard. Okay. All right. Well, it's nice to meet you. Have a good day. Yeah, you too.
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Monica, how are you?
Yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs>